Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Now, I know I've been fussing a little bit, but this is the scripture I got. While I was finishing the other, what popped in my head like a thunderbolt was 1 Samuel. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, 1 Samuel chapter 2. Now, I'm going to basically summarize, read a verse or two here and there, and I'm going to summarize for the sake of time. Um, but there's a, uh, a story in there about how Samuel's mother had prayed and, you know, the Lord uh, helped her conceive. And, and next thing you know, boom, she had Samuel. And at, because the Lord blessed her heart and she was no longer barren and she was able to bear a son, she lent the son to the priests for the service of God. Now, this is what ended up happening. As he grew up, you know, with the priest, the head one was Eli at the time. He was the head honcho. And his sons were committing sins against the offerings that the, the Israelites brought to the temple. They were uh, committing sacrilege with the offerings. But what made it even worse, they were forcing the women and they were uh, either committing fornication with those that were halfway willing or they were raping the other ones that were not. God was so angry and Eli was their father. Now they weren't walking with God. Eli was. And Eli got on their case. Remember I said we should get on their case and da-da-da? But this is where the churches fall short. They fall short in the same place Eli did. Eli never stopped them. He never put a stop to it. He just fussed at them and let it go at that. But they continued totally uh, uh, in disregard and contempt toward their father and the Lord. They continued doing their dastardly deeds. And this is what ended up happening. The Lord sent a word to Eli. And he told him, I'm trying to see where the word is. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, boy, if I could just find it. Hold on, you guys. He basically had told Eli that there would not be one man that grew old in his family. That was his judgment. And he said, and when your sons die, they'll die on the same day. That's exactly how it happened. Well, mm, this was sad. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep talking, okay, for the sake of time. This is what happens in the church. We see something going on. We know taint go, taint's supposed to be happening. Now, what they do behind closed doors is their own business. But see, there was a day back in the day. You know, now, now let me explain this real quick before I go further. I am a, I am a big woman and I am big in those areas too. Women who are developed, let's say well-endowed in certain areas, Always have an issue with cleavage. I'm always trying to adjust and all that because I know that sometimes your clothes can shift and when you're sitting down, it makes it easier for the cleavage to start showing itself rather than when you're standing up. When you get dressed, you're usually standing. So you go by the way you look when you're standing and when you sit, sometimes you look down, you know, so I understand that. I'm not talking about an inch. I'm talking about where they got six inches or the blouse is way out here and everything showing but the nipple. No. Oh, let me see. Listen. I understand that part. But the part that I'm saying is not something God will allow. Well, he allows it, but he doesn't like it. Is when we go out on purpose, bearing our wares, cutting it low, wearing it all sexy and, and everything trying to look hot and, and, and juicy. And then we wonder why when we go on a date with the brothers in the church, why they can't keep their hands off of us. It's bad enough they're 
hormones are hopping as it is at that young age. But you're not doing anything to help them. So this is what I'm saying. When you are in a church, any members now, now I'm not talking to the young women, now I'm talking to all of us. When you're in a church, you ladies, you see a young woman come in, she's a member, I'm not talking about a prostitute, because there are some that are coming in to get saved, you leave them alone. I'm talking about the ones that are saved. And you see them prancing in, and their skirt is way up the yin-yang, and the, the cleavage is hanging down to the navel, you go get a choir robe or you put your sweater around them. You say, put this on, sweetheart. Now, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be uh, controlling or bossy or, or, or full of condemnation. That's not even my point. My point is God expects us to do something about it, not just give lip service. Not just give a glance or write a note. But if they don't know what to do about it, we do. And we need to. We need to be aggressive. We need to be forthcoming. We need to be outright. I mean, we need to, to be bold enough to, do you remember, uh, oh Lord, I'm trying to think of the scripture. There was a prophet um, where he had, had given the sacrifice to the Lord and offering. And the, the buzzards came and he would fly, he would fan them away. And, and the vultures came and he would fan them away because they wanted to eat. No, this is for the Lord. Well, what I'm saying is you have to guard what is consecrated to God. And if you have people that are careless about how they handle themselves, then you know the buzzards are going to come in. You know that. So what you have to do is keep them from coming in by covering up things that invite them to come in. I'm speaking spiritually and figuratively and all that, so I hope I don't sound like I'm going cuckoo. But my point is, we are all responsible. You know how Pastor T.D. Jakes calls us the village? We are a village, and we are responsible to help each other. If you don't know what modesty is, here, baby, let me show you. You know, we were at a picnic, and I had a friend. She passed away recently, but uh, I had a friend. She's a sweetheart, genuine, for real as can be. But her life was that of a loose woman. And here she got saved, and she dated a guy, and they got married. Okay. Now, she and her husband had come to the, to the picnic, and her blouse was a little loose up top. And things were kind of showing. Yeah, a lot. So as soon as I saw her come to the park, I said, hey, girl, put my arm around. I said, come here, let me chat with you for a minute. And she was like, oh, how you doing, Sister Pat? How you doing? So I'm doing great. How's married life? Oh, that's great. I said, girl, button up that blouse. <laughs> she was like, huh? I said, button up that blouse. You're, I know you're dressing for your husband, but all the mother husbands going to be looking at you too. Button up. You know, she did it. She did it immediately. She had no problem with me telling her. I didn't even think about that. I said, girl, you going to have these brothers. They ain't going to be hot for the barbecue. They going to be hot for you. And their wives are going to be hot at them. So come on, cover up. Now you're too pretty to be doing that. You don't need that. She's, that was it. I never saw her do that again. To my recollection, she was of the right kind of spirit. You don't have to get on that case and girl, you dressing like old stanky hoe. You don't have to be mean about it. Do it in love. You can be joking, jovial, sweet. If they got the right spirit, they'll, they'll take it in love. They know what you're saying. But don't come at them with a baseball bat. Just be sweet. But do something about it. Make them button up that blouse. Now, if they look at you funny and walk away, <laughs> that's between them and the Lord. But you did your part. You don't just say it. You show them what they need to do. I told her, I said, girl, button up that blouse before I put a coat on you. 
And she fell out laughing. I never even thought of that. I said, yeah, I know you're dressing for your man. I got you. That bedroom stuff. We're out in public with the church. You know, be cool. <laughs> she didn't have any problem with it. No problem whatsoever. So, my and I, that happened to me when I first got saved. You know, I was like that. I was used to letting it all. Yeah, I was advertising. But when I got saved, I knew by then I had to button up. Well, one time my blouse got loose. I didn't know it. The top button literally came undone. And one of the older sisters came over and said, girl, you better button that blouse because sister so-and-so was having a fit over there. And I was like, hey, this button up. And I looked, I was like, ooh, girl, thank you. I didn't even know. I buttoned it up immediately. When a person is of the right spirit, they don't mind being modest. They don't want to keep doing what they used to do. They do want to change. And they're willing. They're obedient. They have a contrite and broken heart. They're, they're tender. They're, they're, they're easily yielding, easily entreated. They're not going to buck the system. They're going to go with the flow because they know that they have to learn a whole new lifestyle. Oh, saints. The reason I'm saying that is the reason I talked about Eli and his sons is because God judged the whole family of Eli because Eli didn't get his sons in check. Now, talking to him was one thing, but he never did a thing about it. He could have sent priests. He could have sent guards, his army, whatever to arrest his sons. He could have done whatever it took to get those sons away from those women and the offerings to the Lord. But he just talked. And he just threw up his hands and said, I don't know what to do with you guys. He didn't do anything. God killed his two sons. God brought judgment. One woman gave birth, called her son Ichabod which means the glory of the Lord has departed. She knew, she knew that they were under judgment and she died immediately after childbirth. I'm telling you, she was part of his family. You cannot think that you can do whatever you want to do and the rest of us can turn the blind eye. No, baby, we're held responsible Two, we're all the same body. We can't go the same place if we're all going different directions. The church will never move forward if you got 10 people going in 10 different directions. We have to get a handle on it. Come together, be one, be on one accord in love and move in the direction God wants us to move. Whatever that takes, even giving up our own tastes and rights, because we are not our own. Remember that we're bought with a price. Your price is high. The blood of Jesus. You are not your own. Much as you may think you big and bad enough to be your own man. You're not your own, male or female. You belong to God. If you got saved, you have consecrated yourself to the Lord. Don't play with that commitment. He said, it's better that you don't vow than that you vow and don't pay. I'm done. Think about that. And God bless you. <laughs>